We've heard it time and again that Moore's law is dying, at least as we know it. However, new advancements in packaging and microprocessor architectures promise to continue driving performance forward. We got a taste of these advancements last year with AMD introducing its chiplets design in the Zen 2 CPUs and Intel showing off its fervorous 3D stack chip, codenamed Lakefield at CS 2019, which should hopefully be launching sometime in the coming months. In 2020, we will no doubt see even more innovation in packaging and microprocessor design, especially in HPC and server parts. But could 3D stacking be making its way to high-performance mainstream chips as well in 2020? As CS approaches, let's take a look at what promises to be one of the most disruptive technological advancements in recent memory. We first heard of a real 3D stack product exactly a year ago at CS 2019 when Intel revealed its Lakefield chip destined for low power mobile applications. At the time, I said it was the most exciting thing to come out of that CES, but as with everything else related to Intel recently, no real products have materialized that use Lakefield so far, and we should only be seeing them towards the end of this year, with Microsoft's Surface Duo already confirmed to have these chips inside. The Lakefield implementation of Fervorous is basically a competitor to ARM SOCs, like the Qualcomm 8CX. So basically it's an effort to bring desktop type performance to two-in-ones and dual screen devices while keeping costs down. One of the downsides of Intel's approach to 3D stacking with Fervorous is that the stack memory is not actually directly connected to the logic dies, instead having to go down through these side pillars to the substrate and then up to the logic logic blocks whenever a memory access is requested. What this means is that Intel's 3D stacking doesn't actually differ that much from their 2.5D designs, like with the KB Lake G for instance, which used EMIB to connect to the Radeon graphics chip. Fovrus in its first implementation does basically the same thing, except it puts the second chip on top of the first instead of next to it. There are still some benefits to this first gen Fovrus, like a reduction in space, but the connectivity between dies doesn't really change that much. This is different than the approach that AMD will be using for its 3D stack chips, as we'll see in a second. It seems to me that Intel's strategy has been to experiment with different vendors, including AMD in the aforementioned KB Lake G chips, in order to develop the interconnects and technology to create a 3D stacking ecosystem, not just for their internal products, but for the whole industry. In the future, perhaps Intel will have a similar partnership with a memory provider, or more likely, a 5G modem manufacturer. I think that Intel's plan here is to create a system where they can connect their processors with IP from different sources in the coming years. For instance, Intel logic cores with a Qualcomm modem connected to Samsung memory, or any other type of configuration, both using internal IP or products from external partnerships. Now you might be wondering, if Intel are developing their own GPUs and if they have their own memory technology, why would they want to create a 3D stacking ecosystem that would be open to GPUs and memory from other companies? Wouldn't that compete with their own in-house developed technologies? I suspect that Intel wants to control the notebook and mobile markets at every price point. And to do so, instead of being undercut by custom solutions from competitors, it wants instead Instead, to incorporate their IPs into its own designs. In other words, Intel provides a 3D stacking platform and the interconnects needed for different devices to play along together, and that reduces the likelihood of a custom design from someone else taking over the market. This would give Intel the flexibility that ARM designs currently have, where companies can pick and choose from different IP offerings and then package them all together in one SoC, without having to develop all these systems themselves. Intel lost Apple to ARM in the mobile phone segment, and it looks like they will lose Apple in the notebook segment this year also. So Intel wants to make sure that whatever the next wave of portable devices takes over the market, they are the ones providing the chips inside. This is why at every opportunity, Intel shows off foldable devices, as these appear to be that next mobile form factor that will sell in droves. The advent of 5G will probably spawn even more 
more creativity in the mobile space, so Intel's 3D stacking efforts seem to be geared towards this low-power mobile ecosystem that might give them a chance at competing with ARM, who currently dominates this space. In one of their recently filed patents, we can see a bridge that connects multiple dice. So these are coplanar dice that can in turn be connected to other devices. Intel can use this for their internal products, like we see with their Stratix 10 dual FPGA board, but it can also be used to pair Intel's IP with stuff from other companies. In another patent filed recently, Intel proposes a trench type of connectivity that goes from one end of a die to another. So coupled with the bridge we just looked at, it looks like Intel is creating a packaging system that can stack chips vertically, but that can connect horizontally to other types of devices using standards developed by Intel. This flexibility is how Intel is looking ahead at what mobile devices will look like in the next five years, where various types of chips can be connected together horizontally and vertically to create an advanced system on package. As we add more and more things to mobile SOCs, like encryption chips and inference chips and all sorts of accelerators and 5G technology, the bandwidth requirements will be massive and the costs will go through the roof. Intel's 3D stacking strategy is all about creating this connectivity between different IP from different companies while keeping costs down. This fits in perfectly with what Microsoft is doing, bringing the desktop experience to mobile and portable devices. So, interestingly, we will see a divide happening in the next few years while Apple and the mobile incumbents are bringing their mobile phone-specific technologies to the desktop, while desktop incumbents, mainly Intel and Microsoft, are going the opposite direction, bringing their desktop solutions to portable devices. The Microsoft Surface Duo is a good indicator of what's to come, and Intel is already on that train with Lakefield, which is sort of a poster child for the kinds of chips that Intel wants the industry to create with them. So, unfortunately for us, at least as far as Intel is concerned, 3D stacking will be primarily addressing low-power mobile devices in the next couple of years, although eventually I expect Intel to bring this to the desktop products as well, but that could be years away. If you're sad that Intel is focusing their 3D stacking efforts into this grand mobile strategy, AMD might have some good news for us enthusiasts. They also patented a 3D stacking packaging technology in the middle of last year. If we look at TSMC's 3D stacking presentations, we see a package that addresses one of the shortcomings of previous efforts at bringing memory closer to logic, which is memory bandwidth limitations due to the controllers and a through VIAS pitch. This new proposed packaging by TSMC shows a bunch of VIAS connecting several stacks of memory down to the substrate, which then can feed the logic. There is a problem here when it comes to AMD though. As you are probably aware, AMD has an agreement with Global Foundries up until 2024, which dictates that they need to order a large number of wafers from them every year, which as you probably know, is why the IO die in Zen 2 is on an older node made at Global Foundries. This packaging solution from TSMC can indeed have more than one die, like the one from Intel, but this complexity seems like it would negatively impact latency in AMD's next generation chips, not to mention race costs, which is the opposite of of what you want out of 3D stacking, and it doesn't really fit into what AMD is trying to do, which is a much more tight and custom integrated system, unlike the more open design from Intel. However, AMD seems to have come up with a solution that addresses their needs in a way that TSMC doesn't. AMD's approach is driven by data locality. Unlike current gen Fovris or TSMC's 3D MIM, AMD's patent proposes that the memory dies connect directly to the logic dies. So if there's a memory access request from an execution unit that is considered local, in other words the data needed is in a memory cell close to the core making the request, 
then the access is made directly without using a bus. So remember earlier when I said one of the disadvantages of Intel's current Fervus design is that the memory access has to go through those side pillars down to the substrate and then back to the cores. With AMD's approach, if the data is determined to be local, the request just goes straight from the core die to the memory cell, making it much more efficient as far as energy consumption is concerned and lowering the latency in that request. But how can this device determine if the data is local or non-local? Well, AMD proposes the introduction of a control die. This control die can have other things, of course. It could even be a refinement of the I.O. die we see in Zen 2, but stacked in between the logic dies and the memory dies on top. So you get this sandwich with the logic dies on the bottom, the memory on top, and then this control die in the middle. So what this control die die does is it determines if the data is local or non-local, like I said. And by the way, if it's non-local, then the transfer is done through the caches, like in current designs. If this sounds confusing, and if you want to know how this system will work from a coding and runtime perspective, I already did a video that covers this exact type of data locality a few months ago titled The Future of Computing Performance, which I highly recommend you watch. One of the things I mentioned in that video was the notion of metadata metadata for locality, and AMD's patent suggests precisely a similar system will be used in their future designs. This approach that AMD is proposing makes a lot of sense for several reasons. This control die doesn't need to be on the latest node, so because AMD has that wafer agreement with Global Foundries, this can be made there, on all the nodes, while the logic dies can be made at TSMC. But there is something else that's fundamental to understand about AMD's proposed 3 3D stacking design. This direct connection from logic to memory cells requires a very tight integration between AMD and whoever is providing the memory. The thing about these 3D stack devices is that they need to be co-designed with whoever is providing the memory. You can't just slap some memory on top of the logic dies willy-nilly, because if you do, you end up with the system that Intel has, where memory is in reality separated from the logic. I've already done a video talking about AMD's relationship with Samsung that I suspect goes beyond just providing graphics IP. And I think 3D stacking might be something that will join the two companies together even further. Samsung is the largest memory manufacturer in the world, so who do you think will be the key player once we start adding memory on top of all these devices? Now, if Intel is focusing their 3D stacking efforts on the mobile space, what will AMD be doing with this cool patented 3D approach to stacking? We might have gotten a hint during the next generation Xbox presentation. It does appear that the die shown has multiple layers, so it could be the case that AMD's APUs that derive from the work that they are doing for Sony and Microsoft will be 3D stacked and coming to market much sooner than most people expect. It's possible that the Xbox and PlayStation 5 chips are indeed 3D stacked and that the APUs that will follow towards the end of this year will be 3D stacked as well. How insane is that? One of the greatest barriers to APUs taking over, as many people have rightly pointed out, is exactly the limitations in memory bandwidth. But if these devices are designed from the ground up to address data locality with this control die managing memory accesses, then the last barrier for high-performance APUs will be overcome. There is an open highway for 3D stacked APUs to have really high levels of performance performance, basically matching several discrete components but in a tightly integrated package. With the memory bandwidth problem solved, the next obstacle is of course thermals. So I suspect that inside that control die we will see additional execution units for thermal control devices. In other words, there will be sort of a small computer within the control die whose function is to predict how hot the SoC becomes based on memory access requests. and manage things like clocks and interconnect usage accordingly. The advantages of this type of integration are numerous from power draw to performance, but most importantly, when it comes to cost. For those wondering how on earth is it possible for Microsoft to be selling a console with 12 teraflops of performance for around $500, these advanced packaging techniques might be the answer. Just like I talked about in recent videos, integration has been the major driver for performance advancement in the last
last 60 years, and that's going to continue to be the case in this coming decade. 3D stacking is all about integration. Now, of course, 3D stacking doesn't come without costs, and clock speeds on these 3D stack devices will probably be lower than what we're used to seeing. But if there's anything we've learned in the last couple of years is that clock speeds aren't everything, especially in the age of accelerators and many core CPUs. With all this memory being stacked on top of chips, I also expect demand for memory to be at an all-time high, and memory prices should go up significantly in the coming months and years. Now, perhaps Perhaps another disruptive technology that will make an appearance in 2020 is MCM-based GPUs. But I'll wait until Intel CES presentation before I look at how likely that will be. If you're not subscribed to the channel yet, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss my upcoming CES analysis. The Cortex Discord server was voted the best technology server of 2019. That is a complete lie. There is no such vote. But if there was, I'm 100% confident the Cortex Discord server would win. Join this family of PC enthusiasts by supporting me on Patreon. You'll also gain access to exclusive sessions on computer architecture and help this channel continue to exist. So join my Patreon today. Thanks for watching and until the next one.